Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of DVC Clubhouse. Uh, joining us this week is, of course, Amy. Hi, everyone. And our special guest this week are Earl and his lovely wife. Hi, hey, everyone. They are, believe it or not, joining us from Animal Kingdom Lodge. So they are on site and on property, ready to go. Welcome, you guys. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Thanks for being here. Um, Amy, do we have anything that we need to start with housekeeping wise or, or? I don't think so. I think, I don't think I've made any mistakes that I need to clarify. Okay. <laughs> so, other than Very just, good. you know, if, you know, other than just reminding people about our meetup next September and um, liking and subscribing to the channel. Definitely. Yep. We Find us on all our all social medias. Support. We're on Instagram, we're on TikTok. I'll post those links live here as we go. But um, yeah, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, we're all over the place. So, well, Earl, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves and uh, where you're from, where you're at? Sure. Well, right now I'm at Animal Kingdom Lodge, but <laughs> uh, I'm originally from New Jersey. I was born and raised, I was born in Pleasantville, moved to Newark when I was 12. And was there until 1999 where I moved to North Carolina uh, and been in North Carolina ever since. Very cool. So do you guys drive down or fly? We, most of the time we fly down. Uh, it's just easier. I'm always on the, behind the wheel of a car, traveling somewhere for work. So anytime I can get from behind the wheel. <laughs> for sure. <I'm> <laughs> Plus the nine hour drive is, not something I want to do. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, how long have you been DVC members? Well, that's an interesting answer. So we were married, we had married, spent our honeymoon actually here at Animal Kingdom Lodge uh, in oh, 2008, wow. which is, I didn't know anything about, it. it was my first time at Disney altogether. Okay. I was just excited to be here. Uh, we went, our room wasn't ready. We were just kind of dead tired. And so we were waiting around and they offered us to take the DVC tour at the time when it was the best kept secret. Gave us a $200 gift card and fast passes. I'm like, I'm here for that. <laughs> <laughs> so we went. However, the guide, it was probably a combination of the guide and our tiredness. It just didn't really click at the time. So it was like, eh. Okay, that's nice, but you know, not interested. And so the following year we came for anniversary because now I'm stuck on going to Disney. And so we came for anniversary and we had a new guy, George, and he walked us through it, showed us, uh, I think it was Saratoga Springs. No, showed us a, a model of Bay Lake Tower that they had at Saratoga Springs at the time when they were doing it that way. Oh yeah. And we were, we were very impressed and we bought. Very excited. Bailey Lake Tower hadn't been purchased yet, but then we got home to an unexpected bill. And it was like, oh my gosh, hit the panic button. We got to call and cancel this. We can't do this right now. And so we did. And so we were still come for years on an eye. We owned a different time share. And so we were able to exchange an RCI mm -hmm. to stay at different. Uh, DBC resorts. So it wasn't really a factor. And then when COVID hit, it was like, okay, we're in a better place. We're at a better time. We were talking about the wreck. And then when our happened, was canceled. It's like, well, maybe, you know, we'll just, we just, I wanted to get into DBC. It didn't matter how, hook or crook. So <laughs> we went resale. And we already had annual passes. So it wasn't really a, a factor. Moonlight magic wasn't really, it's, it's nice, but you know, we just, I just wanted to begin. The perks weren't really my motivation. I just wanted to be able to have the DVC experience for the next however long our contract is. And so we purchased- It's your home resort. Animal Kingdom Lodge. Okay. 
which is where we spent our honeymoon. So, <laughs> oh, nice, awesome. I love well, that. that uh, yeah, that would have gone differently for me. I tend to buy things when I'm tired rather than not buy things. <laughs> I get Amazon things showing up like I would have woken up the next morning and go, Did I just buy 200 points somewhere? So, at least you were smart about it. <laughs> so, and yeah, so we, you became official DVC owners in 2020? 2021, actually. The last November. Or October or November, something like that. Okay. It's like, like forever ago. It, but It feels like it's been such a long time because we've come so much since then. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Sorry, you said that you came down on RCI points before you bought? Correct. That's, I had I had RCI for a long time. I still have it. I can't get rid of it. I hate it. Do you still use yours? Can I ask? Yes. We we own it Hilton, which allows us to do the exchange points. So when we not staying our property, we're staying at one of our properties like maybe 10 minutes away. So Okay, cool. It's a nice little commute. So yeah. All right. It's amazing how becoming becoming a DVC member just changes the way that you travel to Disney World and it just opens up that that ability to go for a couple of nights at a time you know I I have good feedback from people all the time they're like oh you're going again you're going again I said yeah but I'm, I'm only going for two nights and I'm going by myself and the last time I went I was there for three nights so you know the combination of of being an annual pass holder um having DVC and then using a credit card that accrues airline miles it's like a mm -hmm. no-brainer when you want to get away you just it's it, it really it's like really having a home away from home I you know I've said to people you wouldn't think it was crazy if I had a beach house if I was going to it every weekend it's mm -hmm. true this is kind of the same thing it's like you know I own a a, a deeded real estate interest in in a in a vacation property that I like to take advantage of so <laughs> I do <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Even when we were coming and didn't own DVC, we're like, the minute we get the opportunity to, we're, we're going to go ahead and buy in. Um, it's just a different level. Like, you know, there's there's nothing like being able to hear that welcome home when you get in. And like, even when we were doing it on RCI, you still felt like you were part of the DVC family. So it was just like, okay, when we saw the opportunity, it was like, we're here. Here we are. Welcome home. <laughs> so. yeah. Very good. So j just the one home resort then Animal Kingdom Lodge? Yeah, at the at the moment. Good. We the, the Adronitis bug hasn't hit us yet. <laughs> well, you're lucky. <laughs> what Wait uh, until you run oh, out of that... and then you'll panic. Yeah. <laughs> is Animal Kingdom Lodge your favorite? That's yes. hard to answer. It's um, Boulder Ridge is just wonderful. There's so many places like, and two, it seems to me like the climate changes where I want to be. And it's really, really hot. We've been in more open places where there's more water, it seems to me like, but I don't know. Do you get it like that? Yeah. I, like being in a cooler weather to me to sit on the patio and look at the end. This is wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you guys just just tell us what what do you see? You're you're sitting in Animal Kingdom Lodge. What are you looking at? Well, right now the you, but no. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's behind us? I what saw some wildebeest and um forget what those everybody's left now there was a giraffe there was a giraffe thing wildebeest and there's a different types of birds i forget what that animal is called with the horns and i'm sure if i flip that thing over it'll uh, tell the ant coli cattle no it's no. not the ant coli cattle it no. looks more like a deer but the horns are oh okay so no, he's kind of curly brown yeah. let me figure out what the other thing is She's... The, she's gonna <laughs> the, yeah the assistant the, the assistance in her is gonna check out so i mean it's just i mean just sitting out here it's just wonderful the breezes come in get to see the animals when they are by and 
this one right there. So very cool. Well, yeah. So there's this a few animals. Oh, there it goes. The no, giraffe. Mm -hmm. Now the name of this one is not out there, but I've seen it a few times. I don't. Sorry. Well, that's all right. all right. I don't know the name. Oh, antelope. Antelope. What that's what it was. Sorry. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> It's been beautiful watching them just sitting out on the patio and watching the movement, watching how they interact with each other um, and how they walk around. Like they seem to look for where the food sources are and if the food source has been exhausted, then they go somewhere else. But I guess going back to your original question, um, kind of what Mark was saying, it really depends on what we're in the mood for. Um, Animal Kingdom Lodge is, Probably one of our favorites, probably because it has sentimental value, because that's where we spent our honeymoon. I like Beach Club because of the walk from Epcot. That's it, though. Um, <laughs> it, I'm not a fan of Storm Along Bay as much as everybody else is, but you know, to each his own. Uh, I don't like walking on the pool deck without my shoes on, so the sand water bottoms doesn't really help me. Um, Grand Florinia was wonderful. Um, that was really nice. Boulder Ridge was probably one of the more serene places we were at. We could see the pool, the sunset coming up over the trees. Uh, let's see what else. Pleasure was nice. We were there for last Christmas. Mm. And just being able to see the fireworks from our balcony on Christmas night was awesome. Saratoga Springs. Saratoga Springs. This is going to be an unpopular opinion. I actually enjoy Saratoga Springs. I mean, it's 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 a big property, but it's so much to see and walk around and do. And it's a short walk to Disney Springs, or you can just depending on where your building is, you can see Disney Springs from across the water. So I really enjoy that. Yeah, I'm with you. I I think Saratoga Springs gets a bad rap, but I I'm a fan. Now. I'm less of a fan of the tree houses, although my grandbabies loved it. You know, they they loved that, oh my gosh, we're in a tree house kind of kid feel. But man, it takes forever to get anywhere from there. We ended up just renting a car after the second day. But Saratoga, Saratoga Springs proper, I think, is very underrated. I would agree. I would yeah, and agree. I think that also, you know, it, it it does have this reputation of being big and sprawling. But I feel like once you stay there and you learn how to navigate it, it doesn't feel as big as people think it is because they have that bridge that takes you from the paddock over to mm -hmm. um, the carriage house. You can just hop on the boat right there to go to Disney Springs, which I love for both Old Key West and Saratoga Springs. That boat ride to Disney Springs is so lovely. It's like such a nice kind of just a civilized way to travel and you're outside and you're getting to soak in the gorgeous weather and it's so scenic. So I, I, I always say, you know, I've said it before on this show, when people ask me what my favorite resort is, I say, whichever one I'm currently at, because I'm, I just love, yeah, I just, when I'm there, every single resort, I'm, I'm happy. Even, you know, Bay Lake Tower is probably my least favorite, but while I'm staying there, it's my favorite because I'm there and I'm happy and the Disney magic is just, it, 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 it does its job on you. Yeah, and, and to, to that about Disney magic, I, I always hear a read on posts where people are saying, oh, the magic is gone. Like to me, the magic is what you make it. Like yes. the cast members themselves, we could talk all day and we won't, but we could talk all day about the corporate side of Disney and how that's, but the, the people that, if you come there with the right attitude, the magic is is there. Like, and we've made relationships with wait staff, skincare people, music people that have lasted for like almost fifteen years. We, you know, we go to church with people. We go to their homes. They meet us every single time we come. They engage other guests to celebrate our occasions. We went to uh, the Aspen Steakhouse in October for our birthdays and 
they had the other guests sitting around us sing happy birthday to us with them. And we recorded it. And like, we, we will remember that forever, you know? Yeah. So it's like you, you, you develop these deeper relationships and you care about each other and you keep in contact even when you're not here. Hey, thinking about you, Merry Christmas. I'm gonna be there in January. Are you working then? You know, and it's just beautiful, beautiful. And we, we have people chase after us in parks, <laughs> in restaurants, at the airport. Earl, Mrs. You know, <laughs> they, they come to know what we wear. And, and then, you know, when you plan the next trip, if they're gonna be here, you meet. We meet their children, we meet their grandchildren. They take us to dinner. I mean, it, just these beautiful things have happened over the years with these just small context contacts because of common interest in um, leisure and food. And I mean, and people expose us to things that we wouldn't know about. They take us to other restaurants and other places and it, it's just beautiful. And there's diversity, such diversity, you know, um, we, we've developed closeness to people that look like us, people that don't look like us, people that are younger, people that are older, people with small children. I mean, like there's no um, barrier to sharing joy. I agree, I agree wholeheartedly. And that's that's kind of why Amy and I started this channel and this this group is we feel the same way there are so many people that i've met that i consider lifelong friends now that i would otherwise probably would not have spent any time with and it even stretches beyond those lifelong friendships sometimes just talking to somebody in line and them seeing your dvc swag your backpack or whatever and you have a conversation while you're waiting for you know for your Big Thunder Mountain splash pass or fast pass, you know, they, uh, you talk, you, you get to know each other, you get on the ride and you might never see each other again, but it made that little bit of waiting in line a little bit better, I think. And there's a generosity that occurs that is just like mind blowing to me. You'll be standing in line. You say, Hey, where'd you get that? That's cute. Oh, I got another one. You want it? And people, you know, you just like, I have this extra. I mean, even when we have points, there was a uh, there was a moment we had so many points, and we didn't know how we were going to use them all in the time that we had. So we like come, and come. We kept inviting people. Nobody would come. Nobody <laughs> would make the time. Nobody like. And so finally, we a friend of mine who has um, she had some medical problems that have really like changed her life. You know. She can't work anymore. And I was like, come on, you got to come. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I might not be able to offer this to you again. You may not be well enough to accept it. Just come. And she brought her family and they went. She had another relative that was an hour away from here. They got to reunite. It was so beautiful, so beautiful. And um, to me, like this healing moments like we've had uber drivers that seem sad and it's like let me pray for you what's going on with you and now you're all weeping together you know and, and i mean it's it's just a beautiful thing that's fantastic things don't happen at home so i don't know what the magic of of mickey mouse is <laughs> that like uh, i guess it's because you're relaxed enough to trust uh, strangers, you know? Like you have these moments where you can just relax your, your guard and receive and it's, and then things come back to us, you know? Like we had shared, we shared a trip with this family and you know, you don't realize how much it's gonna cost until you're in it, oh my goodness. They need this, they need that. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here's a car, here's this, here's that. Um, but then like years later, somebody says, hey, you want to come on this cruise with us? <laughs> and you end up going on this trip that you never would have been able to go on. And it just grows. Absolutely. I keep waiting for Amy to bring me on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I um I love what you said about, you know, there's no barrier to sharing joy. You know, it's like, I, and I think that that is the beautiful thing about Disney is that, and, and it's unlike any other vacation because there is a quality of, I think people go there looking for magic, looking for joy. Whereas some other vacations, people are just going to relax and they don't want to talk to the person sitting next to them on their beach chair, but you're there surrounded by people who love something that you love in a place that is trying to make it easy for you to experience joy. And it does, it just, you just feel this, like, you know, your, your cup is full when you're there and it, and it, you know, pours over. And what I love about DVC is, you know, I've joked that it's like the other members that I've met are like my neighbors. And to your point, they'll introduce you to a restaurant that you haven't been to. Just like if you were home, somebody said, oh, I, did you go to the new restaurant in town? We should go. That That's what ha is happening with DVC members sharing their experiences. You know, like I, in September, I recently stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge and from other members' experiences, it inspired me to do the Starlight Safari that at, at the resort, wow. which I, probably wouldn't have done if I hadn't heard other people talk about it and rave about it. So it really does give you an opportunity to share what you know and love, learn what other people know and, and, and love about it, and just always have a different experience when you're there because there's so much to do and see and ways to connect. Right. Well, yeah. And to, and to piggyback on that, you know, I tell my friends, oh, we're going to Disney again, and they just roll their eyes and because mm -hmm. I think they see Disney from the lens of, well, it's just really expensive and there's rides, you know, but there's so much more to it. There's so much, the shows, the fireworks, the merchandise, the restaurants, mm -hmm. the, like there's literally something for everybody. And I mean, I like to say something for every budget that's getting harder as, as time goes on, but still you can find a way to find some Disney magic no matter what is going on in the world. And it's a safe place. And it's a place where it doesn't matter how many times you've gone, you know that you're going to get a minimum level of standard that is far and away above anybody else's maximum standard, I feel like. Absolutely. I, I think, like, I used to always hear people say, I'm just going to do a resort, say at DBC. And I'm like, the parks are right there. Why would you do that? So it was one day we we're here, I'm sitting out on the balcony looking at the animals, and I'm just like, just sitting there for hours, just looking out, and she's like, come on, let's go, let's let's go to a park, and I'm like, huh? <laughs> I thought we were just going to do nothing, so <laughs> it, I mean, there's, there's, there, there is a peace, there's, there's a joy, um, and that's what people used to ask me, why do I post so much on Facebook groups, and, you know, because, I want people to see that there's more to do. Like we could, you know, you can, it doesn't take much to find somebody to complain about something. And yeah. while, they're, while their gripes may be warranted, there's, that's not always, I look at the bright side of everything. I'm grateful for everything I'm able to do. You know, the, I, there's a time where none of this would have been possible in my life and I never thought possible. But, and I think Amy, you know about the roller pin story, but stuff like that is just, you know, it's funny to me now because because there was a time where none of this would have been possible. None of this would have been. So every opportunity I get to enjoy something, see the fun in something, see the, I mean, even when it's funny, even when I see kids like, I don't want to do this no more, but it, it, you know, it's just, <laughs> it's just fun to do that. And, you know, we did a wild Africa trek, I think in October, no, September when we were here. And I got a few notes about people who said that they booked one because they saw the pictures of our experience. And I'm like, that would have never, that was something we always wanted to do. So it's nice to know that, you know, my, my posts aren't just for, you know, cause I don't do it for fame. I'm like, hey, here's what we've done. Not, not bragging, but like, hey, here's what there is to do. You can click past the negative, here's the fun stuff. Yeah, you know, when, when I take the pictures looking goofy, that's me. I, I don't put any oomph on it. It's just, girl. <laughs> so, yeah. 
I love that. I, I also did that wild Africa trek in September. And it is one of the, my favorite things that I've done at Disney World in my 20 years of going. It was just spectacular. Absolutely. I would definitely do that again. Something else we did, we had the opportunity to do. Um, and I get that not everybody can do this, but we did Victoria and Albert's. Oh my gosh. It was the, the family we met. That was last year. From, from BBC. Anyway, there's this couple that we met and they have adult children and their, their daughter's about to give birth to the first child. But we've come over time and met and they celebrated their 29th anniversary um, last few weeks ago. And I didn't know we were going there. He's telling me, you got to get dressed up. I'm like, oh, let's go to California. We're like, I don't wear my jeans. Why I got these ones? Just do what I tell you to do. Come on, come on. So we're all dressed up. And he's pulling up into the um, the gate. You know, we're here for v &A. And I'm like, v &A? I thought it was California. v &A. And we get there. I have no idea. And there's the other couple. I'm all decked out. And there's the beautiful tree. And we're taking pictures together. And then we get to this food experience. And it's like a four or five hour food experience, but it is a journey. It's a journey to different countries. It's, a, it's, an, it's an educational experience about cuisine and, and um, how things are made and processed and how they're prepared and how they're seasoned and this. So it's like so much more than just eating a dinner, you know, and the way they present it to you is so beautiful. The, the journey, the music, the setting, um, and the people know what they're, they're, you know, they know their stuff. You, you ever go to a restaurant, you know, how do they prepare to sell stuff? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. You're, you should yeah. know, you know, um, who does know? Can you go get them? So it's, it, it, I just love it. I love it. I love that the people care about the culture. They care about uh, how things are done and why things are done, and they take the time to share it with you. That's and great. then you go to the cookbooks and you share the cookbooks. And I mean, I've, I've gone to food seminars here and prepared the stuff and presented it to my colleagues at work, you know, and so now they're interested in Disney World just because I gave them this French toast. <laughs> <laughs> this crazy French bread or something with this maple syrup. I mean, it's just magic, magic, how these things can bring people together. That's very true. That is that that is a great point. So let me ask you this. You, you named some of your favorite uh, resorts. Do you have one that is your least favorite? Do you have one that you're looking at your point charts and you're going, I mean, I'm glad I still get to go, but I just really didn't want to stay there. I mean, if I had to pick a least favorite, it's been a while. I can you even really pick the least favorite? It's hard. I know it's a hard question. I think, well, we haven't stayed at Bay Lake Terrier, but we've been in the room with some of our friends. And it's just, it, it doesn't feel like, I know it doesn't have any Disney, anything to it other than you could walk to Magic Kingdom. I mean, that's nice, but I don't, if I never stay there, I won't be upset. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting to me because that's, that's the popular answer to that question. I think more people that we've interviewed have said Bay Lake Tower over anywhere else. And I think I'm the only exception. Actually. <laughs> but um, I see the point too. Like I liked, because I stayed not too long ago and it was very nice refurbished. It felt very clean, you know, um, but my big complaint about it is to get food is a journey. doesn't matter where you are at Bay Lake Tower. There's nothing in Bay Lake Tower to eat. You have to go over to the Contemporary. And sometimes if like where we were, we were near the top floor. You got to go down, then over to the mm -hmm. bridge and down some more. Yeah, it's it's a lot. I get it. I get it. But just you're in Disney, so it's... Exactly. It's Disney beats anywhere else, so... <laughs> and that's the thing it's it's the um it's the only resort that my older daughter 
daughter, the only DVC resort that my older daughter has not been to. She's been to every resort, Disneyland, Alani, Vero Beach, Hilton Head. So Bay Lake is her last. So we're staying there when we go in March so she can check it off the list. And even though it's my least favorite, I'm still so excited to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Earl, you said it before. It's like, just, I'm just so grateful that this is my reality. And so it's it's a really high class problem to have when you're saying, oh, Bay Lake Tower is my least favorite, but <laughs> I'm literally staying someplace where I can see Cinderella's castle. I'm in Disney World. You know, it's when you're there, it's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I yeah, I, I'd say none of it for granted. Um, it you know we. I mean, what can you say? It's like because and and two, I also recognize that. Even when my post is, some people are just kind of living through what we do and they'll never be able to do it. So I, I'm always mindful. I remember when we, we got the, we got a week long in the summertime. I was able to book a beach club for an entire week. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. However, what I did realize is that somebody had to cancel their reservation in order yeah. for me to get them for whatever reason it was. So when I, I actually I do a lot of storytelling when I post. And so I was like, I was excited about getting it for our anniversary, but I also think whoever had to cancel that, and I'm sorry that it happened because I'm sure for somebody, it's not the worst than canceling a trip that you were excited to go on, especially at the last minute. Um, so, you know, I, I look at both ends. I, I recognize people can't go to Victorian Alberts. I recognize that people may not be able to do wild African track, you know? So I'm like, hey, you may not be able to do it, but here's what it looks like. So you can at least experience it. And I try to capture that when at any, you know, I just try to capture that to share with people because I think it's important. We have a new friendship. Um, when I was here for a conference for part of the week and she, I convinced her that she should come to this conference because it's such a great conference. And she came and then the last day we spent the day together and we went to the parks and we went to eat. And she was telling us about um, her mom. And when they had come, where did they stay? They, they were trying to come be in a specific resort because the mom was terminally ill. And they had learned that, you know, her time was really, really short. And mm -hmm. the resort was booked. But when she told the story, they made accommodation for her and they gave them passes so they wouldn't have to wait on lines. And they, I mean, and she, and the mom died like 13 days after they got oh, home. Yeah. So oh she, gosh. Story, and I'm wow. like, you know, imagine what had to take place for them to draw all these things together, especially if they were full. So how did they even do that? But they did it, you know? So, I mean, when we see, we saw the dance performance at was Magic Kingdom, and you know the the dance moms and the young girls, and I mean big ones, small ones, black ones, white ones, Hispanic ones, uh, just folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities all dancing together, and and just having this moment to shine and perform and and give joy to others. And you know, that is so important for people to have opportunities like that. And they, even the college students that we meet here, they're so excited to be here um, and have this be part of their education. And, and I don't know, to me, there's just so many dreams that can come true here for people in joyful or dire circumstances. And they help you make those dreams come true. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's absolutely perfect. You know, it's it's one of those things that you can. Well, it's like we said before. You, the magic is wherever you find it. The magic can be at your house. The magic can be at Disney World. The magic can be wherever. But there's an extra special level when you get to Disneyland and Disney World. Um, you know, it's you brought up the college program. One of our very good friends that lived down in Florida, their daughter just got accepted a few months ago into the Disney college program. And she called me this week 
so excited because she got her posting and she got posted at Ogus Cantina at, at Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which is, I guess, one of the most highly sought after spots in the Disney College program. And she is just over the moon on, wow. on how excited she is to be to be a part of that story. So that's and you know, and that's such a good point too about the cast members. Um, because it's also making their dreams come true. You know, these are people who, when when I was there recently for um, Christmas and I went to the Christmas party and I'm watching the parade and these dancers. And, and I think I, I'm particularly aware of it right now because I have a nephew who is a musical theater major at Penn State. And so, I, and I'm aware of his career aspirations and I'm watching these young adults dancing and and to your point this diverse group of individuals dancing down the street with genuine smiles as they are entertaining people and they are getting a chance to do what they love to and they're dancing down main street usa bringing joy to people i mean what how amazing is that and it's just a beautiful thing that there's a place not only to visit where you experience that magic but where you, there are people who get to bring that magic to life for people and it's like a real life fairy tale it really is it is that's why we try to do our best as much as possible whenever we see a cast member no matter where we are we thank them say hello something like because it's not about us you know they they're here to make our lives special or magical and you know it's only right that we you know acknowledge them you know, everybody wants recognition. So I, I sometimes I go out of my way and I'll, you know, I'll, I think we were leaving a Christmas party. They were, they were just, just kind of had their flashlights gone away. And I just went, hey, and I took a selfie with them and they were all engaged. And, you know, it was, I think they were, I believe that they were excited that they were recognized and not just looked at it as crowd orders. <laughs> That's perfect. You know, and it's, we see a lot of, you know, the front facing cast members, the, you know, the servers and the cooks and, and the ride operators and the customer service people. And yeah, you know, I, I think people take that situation for granted because one of my very best friends is a mechanic for Disney. He, he works on Slinky Dog Dash and works graveyard shift to keep that ride running, you know, and it's, he never complains. He, you know, he's worked for other theme parks in central Orlando and it definitely was not the best experience, but to be on the front lines, I'm sure it's just like any other job. You have fights with coworkers, you have, you know, benefits issues, you have, I can't get the time off I want. Like, it, I'm sure that all happens just like anywhere else. But you never see it as you're there complaining about your own issues with Genie Plus or, or whatever has gone wrong for you that day, because their job is, is to keep that behind the scenes. It's I don't think there's anywhere else that does it. I really don't. No, and it's, and we're probably giving all tasks here, but I remember one year we were here. It was just when they were doing the free dining and we were at, at Kona Cafe and there, you know, they tell you to check in early and we were just waiting. And this lady just comes up to check, do her check in. And I guess she told that it was a college program student. And she told the young lady what she told everybody else that was sitting there waiting, you know, we're, we're going to get you. And she just went off with the little girl. And I was just like, why? I'm like, I wanted to just grab her up. Like, do you not see all the other people sitting there waiting? It's like, this is such an entitlement. Now I get it that you spent money so that you could have a wonderful experience, but like, come on, you're, you're not, it's not robots that are serving you. Yeah, and it doesn't cost anything extra to be nice. Nothing. And the waiting is part of the experience. I mean, you know, it gives you an opportunity to say hi to somebody. Or, I mean, I, I studied yoga during COVID because I needed something to do in my isolation. And uh, I stand on lines doing yoga, you know, and little kids will start doing the yoga too, you know, so like it's an opportunity really to still have joy yeah Remember absolutely we, we, we had a trip and our last day we decided we want to go um ride on the 
Shivago, what's the what's the avatar? You know, the right of passage. Right of passage. Oh, yeah. Right. And so we we never get up early enough to make a rope drop because we just I don't know what it is we're late people, but we tried, <laughs> we, tried we tried, we got there like a few minutes after. And we still had to wait three hours on this line, right? We had never waited on this line. But the artwork in the ground, on the walls, in the trees, just the, all the details. We never had time to actually stop and look at all the details. And it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I remember going to Disney World for the first time. I was 14 years old. And standing in line, you know, and up until that point, my only experience with uh, amusement parks was going to Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Disney World, and I specifically remember waiting in line for Space Mountain and just looking around and feeling like I'm, I am not just riding a road, riding a ride, I'm stepping into a story. And I am... You know, and that's why they call us guests and that's why they're called cast members is because there's they're creating a story every day that we are a part of and we get to live that story. And there is something, you know, about like Fast Pass, Genie Plus, where you kind of bypass the story often and you're not living, you're not truly immersing yourself into the to the, the mythology of that ride. Mm -hmm. And that was something that blew me away my first time. And so I'm I'm grateful that I've had the experience of needing to stand in some of those lines like pirates and really, you know, you look down at those skeletons that are playing chess with each other and you realize mm -hmm. these, these, these details, like they're at a stalemate, you know, and they're just gonna be playing that game of chess forever because no one can win, you know? And those are just the details that you're like, gosh, I mean, a part of this story and I'm observing these these details that are bringing it to life, and it's so awesome. It's really that's part of that magic too, is that like just bringing you into the story that's being told. Yeah, and the same thing happened to me. I was we talked about this on another episode, but the Indiana Jones queue at Disneyland. I don't think there's a queue still to this day that's as good. Like I, I, I would be really sad if if they had. And luckily, fast pass, you don't get to skip that. You still have to go through it. But it is such an immersive experience. And there's stuff to play with. And there's back in the day, they don't do it anymore. You can still find it online. But when you were in line, they gave you a little card so you could decipher the, the hieroglyphics while you were waiting the two and a half hours it took you to get through, you know. But it gave the kids something to do. And the two and a half hours flew by, you know. It, it, yeah. That's one thing that Disney does better than anybody else, definitely. Another thing that blows me away is the talent and the artistry. Uh, I remember when we came for our honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, well, was anniversary. Oh, it was the anniversary. Uh -huh. First anniversary. Yes. So, so we tell this, we tell the guy asks us, he's going around and asking people, you know, why are you here? What are you celebrating? Tell me the backstory. And then he makes up a song to go with your story. So he's, he sings <laughs> us this song about our, you know, meeting and marrying and honeymoon and all the next honeymoons that, I mean, the next anniversaries that'll be spent here. And he had given me this camera. And so I think I'm recording, but I'm not recording. And so I'm like, I didn't get any of that. Can you do it again, right? And so the guy has to do the whole thing all over again. And he's smiling and he's not a problem. Now you can find anything I like. <laughs> that thing from time to time and it's hilarious but the, I mean he wrote a whole script impromptu just like that and then repeated it impromptu just like that <laughs> you know that it's art that's amazing that's really amazing we're almost out of time let me ask you one question before before we wrap up you know 
Earl, your posts are always very positive and I appreciate the heck out of them. You know, they they really bring a lot of joy to a lot of people. I want you to know that. But there's always those that. stories that don't make the cutting room floor, right? That that we leave out because they were maybe less than stellar or less than positive. We want to hear those too. So give us a funny or give us something that that you're like, man, that could have gone way differently and been better. We had a food experience this week. Um, the food was brought out, the flavor was wonderful, but it wasn't hot, you know. And so we had them take it back, and bring it again. Yeah, it's hot, but the flavor's not there. He doesn't want anything else because he's over it. I still want more <laughs> stuff. You could, you gotta get, I mean, you gotta get this right, right? And the, I mean, it's uncomfortable when you complain. It's uncomfortable when they're doing their best to serve you and you're not pleased. And this woman was so exuberant and kind. And let me get this right. Let me make this right. Let me bring this person. Let's try. We'll bring anything you want, anything. And I appreciated it so much. I just wrote on the Disney app about how wonderful Amy was, despite Grumpy Earl. I wasn't grumpy, I just was she over it. Well, the food. I, you know what I mean. <laughs> she, she did, she did. Happy. She, she did. Just, well, she couldn't yeah. get with it. But no. I mean, it was, you know, it was, and we don't have many not great food experiences here, but you know, it happens, it happens. And, um, just that she worked so hard to make it right. And she did fix it at the end because we asked for these two giant milkshakes and only get one. She gave us the two. And that, I think, filled his little belly and we were all happy. <laughs> I, I think one of the other stories that, that I've never shared online, because it's more of a, a negative one, but it, in fact, it was our, our honeymoon. Thank you. We, uh, we were coming into Magic Kingdom, and this is before they had the x-rays. They were doing the bag checks at the time, and the little security guard just kind of ripped open the bag, and down goes the camera, electronic device on the ground. Oh. And so I pick it up. It's not turned on. His response to me was, check the batteries. And I'm just like, less than, less than thrilled with his response. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I go, we go to... I don't even remember where we go to the guest relations. It was set up a little bit differently, but I'm, I'm not, I'm upset, but I'm not belligerent. I'm not yelling. I'm just like, this is when Disney was selling the cameras at the time. I'm just like, you guys got a camera somewhere. I want one. And so I'm talking to the young lady and out of the corner, I'm always paying attention to my surroundings for, I don't know, maybe it's a Jersey thing, but out of <laughs> I had a quarter of my eye to see security kind of lingering outside. And I'm just like, and we're the only two people in the building at the time, minus the staff. And I'm just like, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Like the security broke our camera and, it, and then relations call security. And we and so they never came in the building, but it was just it it was just a weird feeling at that point because all I'm doing is trying to make right or wrong that wasn't our fault. And I sure. went to point. And, and so there happened to be a photographer. This is when the confectionery used to be a studio. Of oh, yeah. Studio. And so he waited for us to finish and he grabbed us because at this point, my wife was crying. So now I'm really upset mm -hmm. and we're only on day two of our honeymoon so and we have no camera and we have no camera for the rest of the trip um so they they couldn't do anything really i think later on they we got it they sent us a check for the camera but we were we were home then yeah we, they did and so he did what he could to make it right they gave us a private photo shoot took a bunch of pictures so he did what he could it was just the, the whole the way it was handled was just like this has really happened to me <laughs> like am i being pumped like security guy security broke my camera i'm complaining about security and then they call security <laughs> it, was it was that's rough yeah that's unfortunate i'm about I, a I, 20 but it was like wow 
that just happened. And then when they did those random screenings, you remember that? Oh, uh, yeah. He would just always randomly be selected to be added down. It was so fun. Believe it or not, I get chosen every time for those random screenings, too. I don't know if it... I, I look like a thug or what, but I get pulled out every, it's in fact, it's a joke in my family that they're like, well, we're going to go ahead because dad's going to be a few minutes. Every <laughs> time. <laughs> so, well, that's those great. Are, those are the well, fortunately, it seems like all of your, most of your experiences are ma more magical than not. So, absolutely. We, we even laugh as we look back on that kind of stuff, you know. I mean, times when I've made us miss flights because I got to have a nitro dessert thingy and um, <laughs> and, and I have to go to the to buy a flight and stay in another hotel and eat another dinner, you know. Like, we laugh at all that stuff because it's just all part of the journey. Well, and what's the alternative? You can laugh about it or you can dwell on it, but dwelling on it's not going to result in anything positive either so absolutely and and i was and we go back to the grateful part i'm grateful that i was in a place where i could afford to miss the flight and it not hurt us financially there was a time yeah. where that could have been really bad sure <laughs> sure I don't know, it's like oh my god what are we going to do but now it's like nope and to anybody who wanted to know no the rolling pin is not being used it's a family heirloom <laughs> 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 Great. Excellent. Well, you guys, thanks so much for joining us. Um, make sure we need to connect at some point. You know, we, we need to make that happen for sure. So, um, I mean, yeah, it was so have? great. It was so great to talk to you guys and to, you know, meet you kind of in person, even though we're not in person, but more, more than just exchanging Facebook posts. Absolutely. You Thank you. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody, for joining us this week. And uh, we'll DVC you real soon. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.